So hi everyone and welcome to this video on an example of deriving the short run supply function of an individual firm and eventually to the market supply function in the short run. So suppose we have this function, okay? Consider the short run cost of an F firm or a particular firm being given as 0.5Q squared plus 10Q plus 5. First, we find the short run supply function of that individual firm and assume that there's 100 firms with identical short run costs. What is the short run market supply function? So pretty straightforward. Okay, now we'll solve first for the individual uh, short run supply function. So again, to be able to derive the individual uh, supply curve of a firm, we have three conditions. So we have our first order condition. And if you recall, the first order condition states that price is equal to short run marginal cost. So we can get short run marginal cost. So SMC, that's just equal to DSRC with respect to Q. Okay, we're going to derive our short run cost with respect to Q. And we're going to get, so derivative 0.5Q squared, that's just Q plus 10. And that's the short run marginal cost, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to equate that to P so that P is equal to Q plus 10, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rearrange this with respect to Q, okay? So I transpose 10 to the other side. I get Q is equal to P minus 10, okay? So I have that form for now. Next, okay, we have a second order condition, which states that the derivative of the short run marginal cost with respect to Q should be greater than zero. What does that mean? Uh, when we derive the short run cost, okay, when we derive, I'm sorry, the short run uh, supply function, we have to use uh, the upward, uh, the upward sloping portion of our short run marginal cost curve. And with three, we have to use the one above the minimum ABC. But for now, this is our SOC. So we can get that derivative. So DSMC with respect to Q. Okay, that's just going to be equal to derive this again with respect to Q. You get equal to one, which is greater than zero. So which means that for all Q, uh, in the FOC, okay, the SOC is satisfied. Okay, the SOC is satisfied. So that's our first order condition, and that's the second order condition. Now we have a third condition, if you recall, and that's the profitability criterion. So profit, uh, uh, profitability criterion. And the profitability criterion states that a firm okay, will produce Q, okay, will produce something uh, if the price is greater than or equal to minimum AVC and will produce nothing okay, when the price is less than minimum AVC. Okay? Now, to get that, of course, we need average variable cost. So we need to get variable cost first. So variable cost. Now, if you look at this one, a variable cost is the portion of your short run cost function, which is a function of Q or that changes with Q. So that's just equal to 0.5 Q squared plus 10 Q. So we take out five because five doesn't depend on Q, which means that five is part of the fixed cost. Then to get average variable cost, we just divide variable cost by Q. That's just going to be equal to 0.5Q plus 10. Okay, so we have that as our average variable cost. Now, if you recall, okay, the minimum average variable cost is the point at which um, the short run marginal cost and the average variable cost intersect. So at that intersection, okay, these two curves meet. So we have to equate these two forms here. So that's going to be uh, Q plus 10. So this is our SMC, which is equal to 0 0.5 Q plus 10. That's our AVC. Okay. And what you'll notice is that 10, if I transpose this, this will be 0. Then this will be 0 0.5 Q. Divide both sides by 0 0.5. We all know that this is going to be equal to 0. Okay, so 
it's equal to zero, then what we do to find minimum ABC is we plug in that value of Q2 minimum to the average variable cost function. So uh, minimum, okay, minimum AVC is equal to 0 0.5Q plus 10, plugging in our Q, that's zero, plus 10, therefore minimum AVC is equal to uh, 10, okay, is equal to 10. Therefore, we now have the conditions we need to derive, okay, the short run supply function. And essentially, okay, that just means that, okay, the firm will supply, so QS is equal to whatever our FOC gave, that's going to be equal to P minus 10. So for whatever price minus 10, okay, the firm will supply QS, Okay, for all, okay, for all values wherein price is greater than minimum, AVC, and QS is going to be equal to zero, okay, when the price is less than minimum, AVC. And that's how we derive, okay, the short run supply function of an individual firm. Now, how do we aggregate this? when we're looking at the short run market supply function well it's actually simple we just multiply these things by a hundred so for b to get okay to get market okay supply function we multiply okay we multiply a firm's individual function uh supply function qs by the number of firms. Since remember, we assume that the firms have identical short run cost functions, uh, we would just multiply by the number of firms. So uh, we said in the question, there are 100 firms. So the market supply function is QS capital, so I'll denote it by that, is equal to 100 times, uh, that's gonna be P minus 10. So that was the old, uh, that's the individual uh, supply function, when price is greater than minimum, okay, AVC, or greater than or equal to, then QS is equal to zero times 100 if P is less than min AVC. So we can just simplify this further. We get 100P minus uh, 1,000, and QS is equal to zero then this is true for all P greater than or min, uh, equal to minimum AVC, then P less than minimum AVC. And that's uh, how we derive our short run market supply function.